In the last lesson, we talked about graphing our basic quadratic function and applying either a vertical stretch or vertical compression. So today what we're going to look at is adding to that equation. So what if we add some value C? So if you remember some of our transformations from um, earlier in the year, remember when we add C, what it does is it creates a vertical translation, right? It's going to be up if we have a plus, right? It's going to go down if C is neg if C is less than zero, if C is negative. So if there's a minus. So really we would see here f of x equals ax squared minus some value c. Okay, and that's really the difference. So what it does is it actually moves the vertex up or down. So when we consider graphing this today, we're actually not going to be putting our vertex at 0, 0. So again, what I want you guys to see in this red and this green parabola um, here, your vertex is moving up or down. So when you add that C or subtract it, your vertex is going up or down. So that's going to impact our table when we are creating our graph. So let's take a look at the first example here. Example A. So um, again, you notice how we're only moving it up or down for today. So our axis symmetry is still on the Y axis. It's still where X equals zero. Okay, so what we wanna do then is think about what happened to this equation. So that's what the comparing means again, right? So describing the transformation. So this minus 4, what happens is g of x is a vertical translation down for units, right? Because it's a minus 4. So that tells us we're going down. So that means, in our minds, we want to think the vertex goes from 0, 0 now to 0, 4, or excuse me, 0, negative 4. And that's because all we did was go up or down. When we go later in this unit, we're going to actually see what happens when we go side to side and add to this. But for today, we're keeping x at 0, but now we're thinking about going up or down, so we're moving that y value. Okay, so I know 0, 4 is my vertex, so what I can do now to create the graph is to go back to the table, and like I said before, I want you guys to do five points. And because our parabolas are symmetric, you don't have to do all that much work. So remember, vertex in the center, 0 right there, and I know this is 0, negative 4, and you can double check doing your work if you want, and then go up and down two numbers. Right? When there's no fraction, I don't even have to think too hard about which numbers to pick. I'm just going to go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, with, once again, the vertex in the center. All right? And because they're symmetrical, you know 1 and negative 1, since they're both 1 away from 0, they're going to have the same y value. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the positives, because I like to avoid negatives when I can. So 1 squared minus 4. 1 minus 4 gives me negative 3. So 1, negative 3 should be at 1 space away from 0, which means negative 1 should also be at negative 3, right? Because they're symmetric. Same thing, let's just go ahead and do 2. So 2 squared minus 4, 4 minus 4 happens to be 0. So 2 is at 0, and negative 2 should also be at 0. Then you can go ahead and create your grid. So I deliberately left the axes blank for you, so you guys can figure out what you want in terms of your scale. Now, because our numbers here are not that large, we can just, you know, draw in our x and y axis. And you can go by 1s, for example. Please make sure if you're doing this on your own graph paper, you label your numbers. And I know mine are getting really squished together. So if you want, you can, you know, skip a line here and there. So for example, instead of starting 0, 1, I might go 0, skip, and then 2, 4, 6, etc. And you can't see my negative signs, so I'll make them a little clearer. So negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, etc. And you don't have to label all of them, just so I get an idea of what your scale is. That would be great. 
And let's go ahead and graph these points. So negative 2, 0. Oops, there we go. Negative 2, 0. Negative 1, negative 3, 0, negative 4. 1, negative 3, 2, 0. Looks like a great parabola right there. Okay? And that's really it. So what we can do in the next example is now describe the transformation using what we did in the first lesson and what we did today. So thinking about how to combine the vertical stretch, vertical compression with our vertical shift up or down. Sorry, let me move back that. All right. So if you take a look at B, now we have two things happening. So if I want to describe this, I have two numbers. So what I like to do is, for me anyway, in my head, I break out what happens. So g of x has two things happening to it. There's this plus 4, which means it's going to go up 4. So it's a vertical translation, up 4 units. And remember, what does that 2 mean from our last lesson when 2 is in front of that x squared? Well, remember, that is a vertical stretch, right? Because that number a is greater than 1. So it's a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, which in your mind, hopefully you're visualizing when we graph this, it should get skinnier. Okay? And then remember, Whenever we do a vertical stretch, it doesn't really change the vertex at that 0, 0. So what changes the vertex here is the plus 4. So when I create my table, I want to put 0 in the middle, and I know the vertex isn't going to be at 0, 0. It's going to be moving up 4 units to be 0, 4. And then, once again, I don't have a fraction I need to deal with, so I'm going to go ahead and just go down to, go up to, to get negative 2 to 2 as my units, or excuse me, as my x values, my input values. And just like before, I'm going to go with the positives because don't like working with negative num numbers if I don't have to. Remember PEMDAS, exponents first, 2 times 1 plus 4, then multiply to get 2 plus 4, which happens to be 6. 1, 6, negative 1, 6. Plugging in 2 exponents first, so 2 times 4 plus 4, 8 plus 4 is 12. Remember, when you're kind of skipping through the work, you want to be very careful and double check your PEMDAS, because if you happen to do something wrong here with the 2, then your negative 2 number is going to be off, and your graph might look great, but you might not have the right number. So sometimes I think it helps just to do all five, just to double check your work. Um, so just, again, some thoughts to consider there. Okay, let me move this up so you guys can see the graph. So since I know y needs to go all the way up to 12, um, what I want to do is I want to make sure when I do my grid, I either put the scale so that I, way I can get to 12, so maybe I want to go by 2s. Or remember, if you can draw your own axes, you can always put the y-axis um, in the middle and the x-axis a little bit lower, right? So just to make sure I can get 12, I'm going to count down 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and put my x-axis right there. So that way I know my graph will fit, OK? And then I'm going to go by ones, and again, to make things maybe not look so cramped, I'm going to skip every other line and go two, four, six. But since I skipped a line, you know those are ones, so I'm going by ones. Negative, oops. Negative four, negative six, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, negative two, negative four. There we go. All right, and let's go ahead and plot our points. 0, 4, 1, 6, 2, 12, negative 1, 6, negative 2, 12. And there we go. So you can see how the graph went up, and hopefully your U looks a little prettier than mine. Mine's looking more like a V. Um, so it's going up, right? It moved up 4, and then it got skinnier. Okay? So I'm going to have you guys try a couple on your own. So one, two, and three. 
check out that fraction in three, so think about what numbers you might pick, and let's come back and check. Okay, let's double check. I didn't see how long this video was getting, so let's wrap this up. So number one, you'll see it's just down five units. Remember, pause if you need to pause to correct and copy. Two has two things going on. The two in front is a vertical stretch by a factor of two, so it's got skinnier. And then the five tells us to move the graph down. And then with number three, I saw the fraction. So when I picked my numbers for x, I wanted to pick numbers that I could use to divide by four um, evenly. So I picked four, two, four, negative two, negative four. But you could have done negative two, zero, or negative two, negative one, zero, one, two as well. You just have to estimate the fractions, which is perfectly fine. But more importantly, what are the three transformations here? We have up four, a vertical compression, and remember the negative is separate, and that's a reflection in the in the x-axis. So it flips down, right, went up, and then the graph got wider. Okay, come back to class with questions, and thank you for listening.